you understand where I'm going with this conversation. I really want to know why we're still talking about the cost of education in public schools when we know the discussion around free education, well, that's the problem, isn't it? It's been confined to higher education instead of the whole uh, uh, school curricula. Yeah, well, I think it would be unfair to expect the rollout to extend to um, the basic education departments as well when we haven't even really managed to fund the full demand of higher education. So yeah. I think um, at the moment it's more around how individuals can actually send their kids to school assuming that we won't have further government subsidies in the near future. Is Absolutely. Where we should, we should and I think we should extend the conversation to primary as well as, uh, uh, you know, the beginnings of education because you can't then expect a product that goes into higher education to be good when you have not fixed the bottom part of it, but perhaps a conversation for another day. Let's talk about the other things that impact, in general, the cost of education in South Africa. We know it goes beyond, obviously, the tuition. There's the issue of school fees. There's the issue of books. There's the issue of other stationery that's required. How do we compare with other countries? Well, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to compare to because there are, there are some countries where they fully fund, but obviously those countries will have a larger GDP per capita, yes. will be more your developed nations, and then you've got other uh, countries in Africa that have a very high cost of education, yeah. and, um, so, uh, and but, but similarly they could have better quality as well. And um, I think, you know, the, the, the cost is more around is more around planning for it and yeah. I think the, the, the ticking time bomb and the scenario we find ourselves in where it, it's becoming increasingly difficult to fund education huh. as time goes by yeah. is simply because the cost of education increases faster than the cost of in than, than the rise in incomes. Yeah. So if you look at income, salaries increase on average over the past nine years according to the PWCHR report at about 9%. Sure. Um, no, 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 sorry, that's sorry not 9%, 6%, 6 which is percent. inflationary, okay, in which makes sense. Yeah. In line with inflation, yeah. it's the cost of education all right, yeah. per the education uh, price index that goes up on average 8 By to 9% nine nine percent percent. per annum. Okay, so, so there's a deficit always that we chase. There's a deficit, a basic deficit of the 3%, right? Um, but that's assuming that you're keeping your child in the same grade. We yeah. haven't actually... Uh, accounted for the fact that as your child goes up in grades, the yeah. cost of each grade goes up as well. So the impact is actually higher than that. Yeah. Um, uh, coupled with the rising cost of fuels and electricities, which yeah. was about 13% yeah. 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 over the yeah. past nine years, coupled with the fact that we've had rising interest rates. Of course, they're not as high as where we were in the 90s. Yeah. But if you look just at the past nine, 10 years, we are sitting at sort of relative... My next rates. question, unfairly, is going to be to you, but I will also put the same question to the school governing bodies because I think it's their responsibility. Because you mentioned the issue around uh, GDP capita spending on education. Actually, I do remember last year I did a debate where we were talking about education. It was the future of education here on CNBC Africa. And one of the stats that I came across was that on a per capita basis, South Africa actually spends more than the U.S., com and, uh, than the US more than uh, European countries such as Germany, and yet we do not get the same results. Well, that's so it does look like our problem lies elsewhere. The problem, I mean, we, we, we don't have to um, go to great lengths to debate the fact that the problem lies in the inefficient allocation of resources, right. of all public resources Which in is South where Africa. the school governing bodies come in. I will leave it there. <laughs> okay. Matakanya, let's come to you. As you can see, I've set up the question very smartly for you. So, on a per capita basis, we spend here more than the U.S., more than most European countries, including uh, Germany. Germany, of course, we know is uh, Europe's biggest economy. What is the problem, in your view, in terms of us getting the results that we need out of the money that we spend on education? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It, it is true that uh, we are spending more than those countries. Uh, I believe that uh, earlier on I indicated that uh, we come from a history uh, that was terrible, where teachers were badly trained, uh, infrastructure badly built. I think all those related things. As much as we are building, we are spending that much money uh, to the education and get this, but we are building all those things in one, you know, uh, infrastructure, training of teachers, removing all the baggages of apartheid and all those things. But now, at the end of the day, education depends on number of people, parents, teachers, uh, communities, and the Department of 
basic education. So all those must work together. But you must understand that uh, we still lack yeah. uh, the support of parents. Uh, yeah. That's where I was going to come in, Matakanya. Actually, that particular okay. point around the support that parents provide schools, and that comes to you yeah. and your, your, your organization, doesn't it? Are you guys doing what you're supposed to be doing in terms of trying to improve the education and the resources we, that the government is pouring in here? We are really doing, we are really doing, uh, we are doing it like, for instance, through your media, yeah. it, I mean, through this platform, then we do talk to the parents generally in the country to say, parents, parents, start parenting at, and your children, parents be involved in the education of your children and show that now you know who are your teachers, with your children's teachers, the principal of teachers, what and what have, and all those things. Then you are becoming involved in the, the education. And when you look at the, if, if you read the Sunday Times uh, 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 this Sunday, uh, this past Sunday, you will realize that now uh, our call is now hit by parents because yeah. the DG, the, the Director General, uh, commended parents, parents who are organizing madrasas because. These children are sleeping in those schools yeah. all over the country, and the, the mothers who are cooking for those children yeah. and the fathers who are providing security for those children. Yeah. So it means that now our call is now being heard, yeah. that parents stand up and be counted, because if parents do not stand up and be counted, yeah. then we shall never smell quality education in this country. Absolutely. Matakanya, thank you. That's uh, Matakanya, Matakanya, General Secretary of the National Association for School Governing Bodies. Uh, Samke, let me end the conversation uh, with you. I don't know if you want to add anything to that perspective, but I was also going to come in and talk about perhaps parents thinking a little bit more in terms of uh, what they do with their children's education. I don't want to get into the Sia Colise debate. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter the other day, but I think in general just how a parent can best prepare their children for tomorrow's future, if you like. Well, I think, um, uh, you know, we can't run away from the fact that we do need to prepare our children, especially in South Africa, for employment in the tertiary sector or for, uh, for and, and in my personal opinion, for entrepreneurship as well. And I think given that uh, factor, that that's where employment currently sits, that's where yeah. the majority of our GDP growth comes from, yeah. then we need to be actively participating in ensuring that our children are skilled to be absorbed yeah. by the economy, whether yeah. it's into the tertiary sector or into entrepreneurship. Um, I think the other thing is that parents need to start thinking broadly around funding education and not really look at the traditional avenues of education policies because historically they actually don't give growth or returns that are that keep up with the increase in cost of education. Right. So we need to look at alternatives that do give high yield returns. Again, yeah. like investing in the stock market, of course, with an yeah. experienced professional because it is quite volatile. And also looking at alternatives such as side hustles and yeah. small businesses, yeah. which can give you a bigger return that you can use to send your kids to school. And the, the conversation begins also to go beyond that into, do you put your child into, into a public school? Do you put your child into private school? Which of the two systems gives your child a better chance uh, in tomorrow's future? Unfortunately, you know, with the digital economy and yeah. uh, the fourth industrial revolution, yeah. our um, public schools are falling behind in terms of being tech and that already is creating a widening gap in the children coming from public education, especially those schools yeah. that don't have those facilities and their ability to adequately compete in the world of technology. Absolutely.